Hello and welcome to this Nexperia quick learning video. I'm Richard, product manager here at Nexperia, and today I'm here to talk about the four ways to control a solenoid or an actuator for automotive applications. The example we're going to talk through today is for a fuel injector inside the engine control circuit. However, this is applicable for any application inside the car where we have an actuator or a solenoid, so a transmission system or a braking system. So the four examples that we're going to look at are the boost circuit and the freewheel diode circuit, along with active clamp and repetitive avalanche designs. So if we first start with the boost circuit, the way this design works is that the battery voltage is boosted from 12 volts to 60 volts for the pull -in, uh, the initial pull-in of the, uh, the fuel injector, so the solenoid in this circuit, uh, and then steps down to a lower voltage for general functionality. A couple of things to be aware of here. So firstly, you see quite a number of components. You firstly have the protection diodes for the MOSFETs that are on the board. But you also have the low side driving MOSFET, which controls the, the energy inside the fuel injector. You have the selector MOSFET up here, which selects the relevant fuel injector for the cylinder inside the car. And you have the boost MOSFET here as well to boost that initial voltage up. Sometimes, as well inside this DC to DC converter, you also have additional MOSFETs for the DC to DC uh, circuit inside there. So you can see straight away there's quite a number of components, um, and it is the most energy efficient because of uh, the, the nature of its design. But again, you know, you've got multiple, uh, multiple components on that board. The next design is the freewheel diode. So the general functionality is very similar in terms of the solenoid current. The difference here is when you turn off the device. So what happens is instead of uh, dissipating and controlling the energy uh, in, a, in a very efficient manner uh, like the boost circuit does, you dissipate the energy through the freewheel diodes on here. So your energy efficiency is uh, dictated by the diodes on there, which are naturally somewhat energy inefficient. Next we come to the active clamp circuit. So this circuit again operates in a different way at the turn off event. So what happens here is the energy inside this inductor pulls the breakdown voltage of the Zener, so the reverse breakdown, high. What happens is that turns this low side MOSFET back on. What happens here then is the energy is dissipated through the MOSFET and through the channel. The key consideration with this design is you need to be within the safe operating area of this low side MOSFET when uh, the Zener does break down and turn the product back on to ensure that you do not damage that component in operation. The final circuit design is the repetitive avalanche design. So straight away you'll probably notice that there are fewer components inside, that, uh, inside this circuit. The reason for this is the energy inside this inductor is dissipated through the low side driving MOSFET, this time through the phenomena of avalanche. So what happens here is the VDS, uh, so the voltage across here, exceeds the breakdown voltage stated of the product and dissipates the energy. Uh, through avalanche through the, uh, the body diode of the component inside there. So I've mentioned that the, 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 the general functionality is common here. So if you look at the solenoid currents, in all these designs they are similar for general functionality. The difference is at the turn off, so the falling edge of each cycle. Uh, so as, as we mentioned, the, the turn off event. So what we've done here is drawn a comparison of the four designs. Now the key difference here is the voltage that's across uh, the inductor. Um, so the, the energy decay is denoted by the voltage. The higher the voltage, the quicker that energy will be dissipated. So the avalanche has the fastest switch off time, so the fastest energy decay, followed by the boost circuit, the active clamp, and the freewheel. So you can see uh, the, the boost circuit is 20% slower, the active clamp is uh, over 50%, and the freewheel diode, again, because of the nature of what uh, the components are that the freewheel diodes uh, is significantly higher than the other designs. If we do look at the repetitive avalanche circuit, so Nexperia have an application specific repetitive avalanche MOSFET portfolio to address this circuit, uh, there are some key considerations to be aware of. So firstly the avalanche phenomena is inherent in the design of this circuit. So Nexperia have tested the products in this space to a billion repetitive avalanche cycles. As we've already touched upon, you have the fastest switch off time, and you also, uh, as we touched upon again, 
also earlier, uh, the lowest count of components on the bill of materials. Thank you for joining today. For more information, please go to nexperia.com forward slash asfets. There are more repetitive avalanche videos available on our YouTube channel. Thank you.